Senate Armed Services Committee meets today to consider the nominations of Robert F. Baylor to be the Director of Operational Test and Evaluation, Dean Winslow to be Assistant Secretary of Defense for Health Affairs. Tom, I have a special interest in you this morning, Dr. Winslow. Thomas B. Modley, that was supposed to be a joke. Thomas B. Modley to be Under Secretary of the Navy and James F. Gertz to be Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Research Development and Acquisition. <clears throat> we thank you all for joining us this morning. We also welcome your family and friends here with us today. As is our tradition at the beginning of your testimony, we invite you to introduce those who are joining you. <clears throat> it's the standard of this committee to ask certain questions in order to exercise its legislative and oversight responsibilities. It's important that this committee and other appropriate committees of the Congress be able to receive testimony, briefings, and other communications of information. I'd ask that you each provide responses to the following questions. And by the way, we had some difficulties a couple of weeks, a week or so ago, and we will not stand for a lack of communication or a lack of responses to questions or we will exercise our constitutional responsibilities, which is not moving forward with your nominations. If you take a look at the Congress Constitution of the United States, that is clearly in our area of responsibility. Okay, have you adhered to applicable laws and regulations governing conflicts of interest? You can just answer by saying yes or no. Yes. Um, Will you ensure that your staff complies with deadlines established for requested communications, including questions for the record and hearings? Will you cooperate in providing witnesses and briefers in response to congressional requests? Will those witnesses be protected from reprisal for their testimony or briefings? Do you agree if confirmed to appear and testify upon request before this committee? Do you agree to provide documents, including copies of electronic forms of communications in a timely manner when requested by a duly constituted committee or to consult with a committee regarding the basis for any good faith delay or denial in providing such documents? Have you assumed any duties or undertaken any actions which would have prepared, which would appear to presume the outcome of the confirmation process? <clears throat> Mr. Beeler, the Director of Operational Test and Evaluation is a vital congressionally mandated position in the Department of Defense. <coughs> if confirmed, we will rely on you to provide us with unbiased assessments on the performance of major defense acquisition programs. This is a critical time to have a strong and capable director in place. Often, it seems as though the Department is in a rush to push some platforms, like the F-35, through testing and evaluation prematurely, while at the same time delaying the delivery of other capabilities required to help us maintain our war fighting advantages. And on the issue of the F-35, gentlemen, I've been screwing around with the F-35 for the last 12 years. And the costs have gone out of control. If some universities and colleges around the country, they'll be teaching this as a classic example of a failure. Cost overruns have been out of control. The plane is still not fully, fully uh, uh, judged, ready for full combat mode, and <clears throat> and. Uh, Frankly, a lot of us grew a little tired of hearing <coughs> the F-35 people come before us, both uniform and not uniform, to tell us everything is going to be fine. Everything is still not fine with the F-35. <coughs> In our hearing a couple of days ago, we had, uh, a few days ago, we had a point made that we have wasted $50 billion dollars of taxpayers' money, $50 billion. Things like WIND-T, future combat systems, and others. And we, 
we need to do things differently, and we intend to exercise our overrides. I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed by the department <coughs> oversight. I remain disappointed by the department's inability or unwillingness to take advantage of the acquisition reforms this committee has mandated over the past three years. If confirmed, we will look to you to make positive changes to our testing and evaluation practices to support the implementation of these reforms. We can't afford unnecessary delays in delivering new capabilities to our warfighters, and yet we must ensure that we deliver systems that are safe and reliable. We will expect you, if confirmed, to balance these conflicting priorities. And by the way, a RAND study, which was briefed to every member of this committee, is deeply disturbing. I urge all four of you to take a look at that RAND study because there's a number of things that there's a number of aspects of that RAND study about the closure of potential adversaries and the disappearance of our <clears throat> critical advantages that is taking place as we speak. Dr. Winslow, if confirmed, you will assume leadership of the military health system at a critical time. Over the last two years, the Congress has enacted sweeping reforms to fix the current system. <clears throat> With this reform legislation, we have created a health system that improves quality, safety, access to care, and the experience of care, creating more health care value for all beneficiaries while ensuring that warfighters get the most advanced medical care on the battlefield. If confirmed, you will be charged with implementing these reforms. One of your most significant challenges will be standing up the Defense Health Agency as a single organization to lead our military health system and transfer and transform the current disjointed medical command structure into a more efficient, agile one. Beyond that, we will look to you to help change the culture within the military health system from a system-first culture to a patient-first one. No doubt this will be the hardest thing you must do, but without a major <coughs> cultural change throughout the entire military health system, true transformation cannot occur, and our warfighters and their families will not get the high-value health care they deserve. Mr. Modley, the next Undersecretary of the Navy, will take on this role during a crucial and complex time for military maritime power. <clears throat> the recent collisions at sea have put a spotlight on major problems in our naval training and readiness. While Congress is at fault for years of inadequate and unpredictable funding, our Navy leadership must also be held accountable. If confirmed, <coughs> we expect you to commit to implementing corrective actions to fix the problems identified in the recent report on these collisions. When you do so, you will have an ally in this Chairman and this committee to provide you the resources needed to course correct. And by the way, we were pleased that the Chief of Naval Operations uh, gave us a thorough briefing and identified many of the problems that existed that caused the terrible tragedies that have taken place. As you may know, we had a little ceremony <coughs> over at the Pentagon with the families and uh, it's, uh, there is nothing more touching and moving than to see the families of those 18, 19, 20-year-old kids. Among the most critical of your duties will be to serve as the Chief Management Officer for the Department of the Navy. <clears throat> I look forward to hearing how you would undertake this challenge and how your experience and leadership will enable our Navy to be ready to fight and win decisively. <clears throat> Some of the greatest threats and challenges of the future will be in the maritime domain, and it is important that we do all we can to give our sailors and Marines what they need to succeed. Mr. Gertz, if confirmed, you will be responsible for managing Navy acquisition programs at this critical moment for the service. <clears throat> our Navy's been too small too long. Despite a requirement for more than 300 ships for the last decade, the fleet has remained between 270 and 290 ships. These capacity shortfalls have helped drive present readiness challenges. This committee is responsible for ensuring 
that acquisition programs are delivered at cost, on schedule, and with the promised capabilities. We will look to you to be a reliable partner in our oversight. The Navy has a troubled acquisition history well known to this committee. Cost overruns more than double the price of each littoral combat ship, and promised capabilities are years behind schedule. A request for the USS Gerald R. Ford aircraft carrier had $2.4 billion in cost growth and delivered 20 minute months late. And the Navy wants to award the next aircraft carrier at a cost of $12.6 billion. I remain concerned with the ability to, to deliver the F-35 program on its latest delayed schedule and within its already massive budget. If confirmed, you must learn from past mistakes, commit to not repeating them in the future, and hold yourself and those working for you accountable.